diabetes is one of the most serious public health problems we face today. More than 10% of the population is living with diabetes, and globally the number continues to rise, with projections reaching hundreds of millions of people worldwide. Most people associate diabetes with blood sugar, diet, or medication. But there is another consequence that is often overlooked until it is already advanced, and that is vision loss. Diabetic eye disease is one of the leading causes of blindness in working-age adults. What makes it especially dangerous is how quietly it develops. You can feel perfectly fine. You can see perfectly well. Meanwhile, inside the back of your eye, delicate blood vessels are slowly being damaged. And by the time vision changes become noticeable, the disease has often been progressing for years. I'm Dr. Angio, and today I want to help you understand diabetic eye disease through the lens of angiogenesis the science of how blood vessels grow, adapt, and sometimes fail. When angiogenesis falls out of balance, whether there are too many blood vessels, too few, or vessels that are simply damaged, disease follows. In fact, more than 70 major diseases are now linked to abnormal angiogenesis. And one of the most vulnerable tissues affected by this imbalance is the retina, the light-sensing tissue at the back of the eye. If you find this kind of science helpful and want more clear, evidence-based explanations like this, take a moment to subscribe, like this video, and leave a comment. New videos are released weekly, and your engagement helps this information reach the people who need it most. To understand diabetic eye disease, we first need to understand what is happening at a cellular level long before vision ever changes. In diabetes, blood glucose levels remain elevated for prolonged periods of time. The retina is uniquely vulnerable to this. Unlike many other tissues, retinal cells absorb glucose directly and aggressively. They don't have an effective way to limit that intake. So when glucose stays high, retinal cells are continuously flooded. This triggers a cascade of damage. Excess glucose inside retinal cells is shunted into alternative metabolic pathways, leading to the accumulation of sorbitol. At the same time, mitochondria, the energy-producing structures inside cells, become overloaded. This overload increases oxidative stress and generates large amounts of reactive oxygen species, or ROS. These reactive molecules damage proteins, lipids, and DNA. Over time, enough damage accumulates that cells begin to malfunction and eventually die. Another major consequence of chronic high glucose is the formation of advanced glycation end products, or AGEs. AGEs are sticky, irreversible complexes formed when sugars bind to proteins, fats, or nucleic acids without enzymes, a process known as non-enzymatic glycation. In hyperglycemia, glucose is everywhere. The likelihood of glucose colliding with and binding incorrectly to parts of the cell increases dramatically. These AGEs persist for long periods of time and accumulate inside tissues. In the retina, this buildup leads to capillary dysfunction, leakage, inflammation, and cell death. This is where angiogenesis enters the story. As retinal capillaries are damaged and oxygen delivery decreases, the retina responds by releasing signals to grow new blood vessels. One signal dominates this response. Vascular endothelial growth factor, or VEGF, VEGF job is to stimulate angiogenesis, to grow new vessels and restore oxygen supply. Under normal conditions, this is a protective mechanism. But in diabetic eye disease, the response becomes dysfunctional. The new blood vessels that form are fragile. They leak. They grow in abnormal locations. Instead of restoring healthy circulation, they worsen the problem. These vessels rupture easily, causing hemorrhages, swelling, and progressive vision loss. This process, driven by chronic hyperglycemia, oxidative stress, AGE accumulation, and excessive VEGF signaling, forms the angiogenic basis of diabetic retinopathy and diabetic macular edema. And the data clearly show how powerful risk reduction can be. Studies have demonstrated that lowering HAR1C by just 1%, for example, from 8% to 7% reduces the risk of microvascular complications by approximately 35%. HbA1c reflects long-term blood glucose exposure, and values below 5.7% are considered normal. Those microvascular complications include the exact fragile blood vessels that supply the retina. Blood pressure is just as critical. 
Research shows that reducing systolic blood pressure by roughly 10 to 15 millimeters of mercury lowers the progression of diabetic retinopathy by 34% and reduces the risk of losing visual acuity by nearly 47%. These numbers tell us something important. Diabetic eye disease is not driven by a single factor. It is the cumulative effect of metabolic stress on delicate blood vessels. This is why diabetic eye disease is often silent at first. One retinal specialist describes diabetes as a slowly progressive condition where patients can have normal vision for years while damage occurs behind the scenes. Many patients are unaware because they do not feel pain and they do not notice change. By the time vision declines, the disease may already be advanced and difficult to reverse. This is why screening is essential. Dilated eye exams allow specialists to see the back of the eye and detect early diabetic retinopathy and diabetic macular edema before vision is affected. Experts emphasize that everyone with diabetes should receive at least one dilated eye exam per year. People with type 2 diabetes should be screened at diagnosis. People with type 1 diabetes should also be screened early with timing adjusted for age in pediatric cases. One of the challenges, however, is that obtaining a dilated eye exam is not always easy. It can take hours. Vision remains blurred temporarily. For working individuals, it can mean losing an entire day. And yet, clinicians emphasize that this inconvenience is minimal compared to the consequences of undetected disease progression. Because when diabetic eye disease advances, treatment shifts from prevention to damage control. Current standard therapies rely heavily on anti-VEGF medications delivered through intravitreal injections directly into the eye. These treatments work by suppressing excessive angiogenesis and vascular leakage. They are effective, but they require repeated treatments and frequent medical visits to maintain results. And that brings us back to prevention. Diabetes management does not protect the eyes only by lowering sugar. It protects the retina by lowering oxidative stress, stabilizing blood vessels, reducing abnormal angiogenic signaling, and preserving mitochondrial health. Lifestyle factors matter. Exercise, proper nutrition, cholesterol management, and blood pressure control all reduce stress on the retinal microvasculature. Nutrition plays a supportive role. Vitamin A supports retinal function and is found in leafy greens, orange vegetables like carrots and sweet potatoes, and eggs. Vitamin C acts as a potent antioxidant and helps counter oxidative stress. It is abundant in citrus fruits and red peppers. Vitamin E helps protect cell membranes and appears in foods like avocados, almonds, sunflower seeds, and dark leafy greens. Zinc supports retinal health and is found in beans such as black-eyed peas, kidney beans, and lima beans. From an angiogenesis standpoint, foods rich in polyphenols and flavonoids may help maintain healthier vessel signaling. Berries, leafy greens, green tea, turmeric, and tomatoes all contain compounds shown to support balanced vascular behavior. These foods do not replace medical therapy, but they support the same biological goal, minimizing damage to fragile retinal vessels before irreversible injury occurs. Awareness is equally powerful. Family members play an important role in encouraging screening, medication adherence, and follow-up care. As one clinician put it, people often do not realize what they are losing until vision is gone. Education helps prevent that loss before it begins. Diabetic eye disease is not inevitable. It does not suddenly appear when vision blurs. It begins years earlier at the level of glucose metabolism, oxidative stress, mitochondrial overload, and abnormal angiogenesis. When blood vessels remain stable, vision is preserved. When angiogenesis runs unchecked or vessel integrity collapses, vision is threatened. The good news is that most vision loss from diabetes is preventable. With consistent metabolic control, regular screening, and early intervention, the balance can be tipped back toward protection. I'm Dr. Angio. If you want more science-based, easy-to-understand explanations about how blood vessels shape disease from cancer to diabetes and beyond, subscribe, like this video, and share it with someone who needs it. I post new videos regularly, and together we can make complex science useful in everyday life. Take care of your circulation. Take care of your diabetes. And most importantly, take care of your eyes. I'll see you in the next video.